Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We haven't looked at a printer in a while, and the other day I got in this new Epson printer. This is their ET2400, and as you can see here, this is a tank printer where you refill the ink with bottles versus cartridges, and it has a much lower cost of ownership. And this is a printer that I would recommend for people who are printing very frequently and don't like the cost of ink cartridges. You can get several thousand pages out of these bottles before you have to put new ones in. And generally, the replacement cost for official Epson ink is about 60 bucks for a new set of bottles. So a lot less expensive than having to throw cartridges at it. And in the past, these printers used to cost a lot more because they weren't subsidized by your future purchase of cartridges. And now the price is coming down pretty significantly. So this one, a couple of weeks ago, cost $250. At the time I'm shooting this video, it is $179 at Best Buy, which is a great deal. And we're going to step through this printer and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this was provided free of charge by Epson. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. They are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And no one is paying for this review. So let's get into it now and see what this printer is all about. Now, just to set expectations appropriately, if this one had cartridges inside of it, it would likely be one of the sub $100 printers you typically see at the office supply store. Not a lot of bells and whistles here. It prints at about uh, 10 pages per minute in black and white and about seven pages per minute in color. And that is in the standard mode. I'll show you the speed of the printer in a few minutes. If you up the quality level to the fine mode, uh, that will take even longer. So it's not very fast for printing a large volume of documents. It also doesn't hold all that much paper. So it's got a paper capacity of about 100 sheets and it can only hold about 30 sheets in its output tray here before the paper ends up all over your desk. So generally low volume work here. It does have a scanner though, as you can see, but a flatbed only with no document feeder. Uh, the scanner will do 1200 by 2400 DPI for its native resolution. And then of course, it's got all that interpolation to try to increase the resolution a little bit more, but pretty much a basic scanner. And we'll take a look at how quick that scanner will operate in a few minutes. There is no manual feed beyond the fact that you could take your paper out and put in envelopes and that sort of thing. It will take a maximum uh, width of eight and a half inches. So legal size paper works in here. In the US, letter size paper works. And of course, in Europe, A4 will work, but you're not going to get any wider than eight and a half inches max. Now, as far as the ink is concerned, let me pop the uh, lid out here. And what you do is you load in the ink in these little receptacles here, and they are all keyed uh, right here with a different key. So you can't put the uh, wrong bottle in the wrong spot. So for example, the magenta here will key right into the magenta slot there. But if I tried to put it in the yellow here, it won't go in because of how the uh, top of the of the lid here is configured. So it does have some safeguards against putting the wrong ink in. But at the end of the day, if somebody really wanted to, they probably could. So what they did on the printer here was integrate its Kensington lock with the ink well here. So you can actually lock this down and prevent people from tampering with your printer. Now on the front, you actually can see how much ink is left in the printer. So it gives you a really accurate assessment as to what your ink levels are. Now I did find when I first got everything set up that it used about a quarter of a tank to get everything primed and ready to go during its initialization process. But there was enough ink left in the bottles to top it back off again. So the only one that's down a bit still is the black ink here on the far left. Everything else is still uh, fully uh, loaded up there and ready to go. Also of note, you don't have to squeeze the bottles here. You just place them on top and they'll drain out until everything is filled up. So you don't have to worry about overfilling either. So all in a pretty clean process here, even though there is some risk given that you have a bottle of ink. So I would maybe put something down or just be very cautious to prevent any accidents from getting ink on carpets, which I don't think would come out very easily. Now, as far as the setup process is concerned, you have two options. The first is to plug the printer into your computer over USB, 
go to the Epson website, download all the software, and configure everything from the computer. The easier option, in my opinion, is to use their smartphone app, and what will happen is your phone will connect to the printer over Bluetooth. That will enable the Wi-Fi settings to get going. The firmware can get downloaded, and it will get on your network a lot quicker, I think, using the smartphone app. And one thing I liked about the smartphone app for setup is that they made it look like you were in a text message chat with somebody where new chat bubbles would pop up with each step you had to take in the setup process. I thought it was very fun and intuitive, and it was pretty easy to get it on the network. But once it was on the network, I had some issues getting my Mac to print to it. I had to go out and download drivers from the Epson website because although the Mac could see the printer, it didn't know what to do with it. Additionally, I was not able to get a Chromebook to print to the printer, even though Epson said it was compatible. But the printer did work fine with my Windows PCs, which saw it and installed the drivers automatically without much of an issue. My big disappointment with this, though, beyond the Mac and Chromebook issues, is that it also doesn't support Apple AirPrint. So if you're looking to print from your iPad or iPhone, you're going to have to export a document into a format that the Epson app can read and then print from the Epson app. Printers that support AirPrint can print natively from iPhones and iPads, and this one doesn't support that. So let's run some printing tests now to see how fast it prints, what the prints look like, and how many prints you can get on a supply of ink. And we're going to start off with a page of just black and white gibberish text here. It's about four pages or so. I'm going to go ahead and click print here and select our Epson printer. I'm going to leave everything on the default here. So the settings that we're going to go to here is the normal print quality, which is the fastest. So you can get a feel for how quickly it will get the document to the printer over my Wi-Fi network and start printing out. One thing I notice is that it is a bit on the noisy side, uh, so it is going to be something that you may not want to have centrally located in a quiet office. You may want to put it in a closet somewhere. Um, but as you can see here, for basic text, it comes out pretty quickly, again, about 10 pages per minute or so. And I'll give you a look here at uh, what the text looks like in standard mode with a a close-up of the printing here. Not bad, it definitely uh, looks like it came off of an inkjet printer in this mode, and I'll show you in a minute a fine uh, printout so you can get a feel for what it looks like when you do use the mode that prints a little bit slower. Next thing I want to print out is just a quick little color newsletter here. Again, we're going to run it in standard mode, but this is in color, and we'll go ahead and run about two pages of this document out and we'll let that process. That might take a little bit longer to get going here, but no, nope, it's going pretty good. And as you can see here, it is taking it a little bit longer to spit that page out because it is printing in color. So again, you'll have a bit of a speed penalty, but it is coming out pretty quick. One thing I've noticed here with the standard mode for printing color is that things look slightly washed out when you print at this speed level. So it's not bad looking, but you'll see that the quality of the image is not quite close to what you have on the screen here. And this image that you see is pretty close to what my eyes are seeing on the printer right now. And I'll give you the other page here and show you a different example. So this again is the standard mode. And then a little bit earlier, I ran the same document off in the uh, fine mode, which took it a lot longer to print, but as you can see, there is a noticeable difference here in quality and that you do get a little more contrast in the image when you have it run at the slower, finer speed. The paper I'm using is not high quality paper, though I will show you some photos in a minute, but I think if you are looking for better color definition, definitely go for uh, the fine mode and take the hit on speed. But by comparison here, you can see what it looks like on screen. So certainly this is not going to rival a photo printer, which has higher quality printouts and certainly more inks to bring out more contrast. But for an inexpensive printer, as you can see here, the fine mode, I think, looks really good. Now, as far as what kind of longevity you can expect out of the ink bottles, if you're printing something like this, you're going to get less pages out of those ink supplies than you would if you were printing something like my cheat sheet here. And it really comes down to coverage. So when the printer companies say you'll get, for example, on this printer, 4,500 pages of black and white, 
it will depend on how much ink is covering the page. So I think on a document like this with just straight text, you'll get pretty close to that 4,500 page mark. But if you're printing things like this, it'll certainly be a lot less than that. But either way, because you have a tank printer here, uh, the cost per page is significantly less than buying cartridges that maybe get you 100 pages or so uh, per cartridge. So there is going to be a much lower cost of ownership here, but you will uh, need to know that you're not going to have as robust of a printer for the entry price given how the economics of these tank printers work. And speaking of feature robustness, one feature that this printer lacks, which is something we typically cover at this stage of the review, is the ability to automatically print on both sides of the paper. This one doesn't do it. So if you are looking to print on the back of a page, you're gonna have to flip the paper over manually after it comes out. Now using the app, you can print out photos from your mobile phone on Android or iPhone. And a little earlier, we printed this picture on a piece of four by six glossy photo paper. And as you can see, it actually doesn't look bad for an inexpensive printer. The contrast certainly is not there, as you can see. But I think if you were to hand this to grandma, like I'm going to do in a little while, I think she'll be happy with it nonetheless. So not bad on the photo printing, but of course, a photo printer will do better. It will print borderless, as you can see here, at the four by six size but nothing larger than that. So four by six is the maximum size for borderless printing with this. Again, not a photo printer, but if you need to print a photo in a pinch, it will do it and pick the right paper for that to get the best results out of it. Now Epson says the maximum resolution of the printer is 1440 DPI and photos like this take about a minute or so to print out. So let's take a look now at how the scanner works. And what I'll do is just load in their a little help document here on the top of the scanner and see how long it takes to make a copy. Now you do have some controls here on the top. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just hit the color copy button and see how long it takes for that copy to initialize itself. It will scan for copies at a maximum of 300 DPI. And we're going to see now how long it takes for a color copy to spit out of this thing. I can definitely hear the scanner going while the printer is going here. So it tries its best to make it as quick as possible. But here you go. This is a, a color copy now coming out. There's other ways though to access the scanner, which I'll show you in a second here. So here is our copy. It looks like it was not too long to get going here, maybe about 45 seconds or so. So there you go. Not bad. Uh, not going to be the highest quality scanner, but it should be sufficient. Now the app here, the same app you use to print photos and to set up the printer will also scan to your phone. And here it is also maxing out at 300 DPI. And I can just go ahead here and click start. And what this is gonna do is scan the document and give me a PDF on my phone, which I can use for emailing to people or storing somewhere. And again, a little slow on the scanning side. It's not gonna be a very fast process here. And of course you don't have a document feeder, but I do want to let this run out in real time so you can get a feel for uh, what you can expect on the scanning side of things. And there we go. We got the document. Now this is a standards compliant network scanner. So if your software that you're using on your computer supports Twain, WIA, or ICA, it will work. I'm using a piece of software built into Mac OS called Image Capture. And as you can see here, it found my Epson scanner on the network and is already requesting that it do a preview scan for me here. And you can then scan with the software you might already be using. On the Mac here, it does try to detect different uh, portions of the document to scan in as separate items. And we also have the ability to crank the DPI up here, although the native DPI maxes out at around the 1200 mark here. So overall, this is pretty much basic transportation. While I was very pleased with the print quality, it is something that's going to be quite noisy on your desk. The scanner isn't all that great, but it will deliver a much lower cost of ownership than this same printer in the cartridge version. And I think for people that are printing quite frequently and at higher volumes, perhaps, this is going to bring down your cost of ownership significantly. But just be aware that if you are using a more robust and more expensive cartridge printer, this is going to not have the features that your current printer might have. So you should definitely take a look at what you're doing first before going for this entry level model. All that said, if you are not printing all that frequently, 
even though this is going to be a lower cost of operation for you, it's not going to resolve the issues that inkjet printers are plagued with, which is the fact that their nozzles clog up all the time when they sit idle for too long. So that same process of having to clean the print heads is something you'll have to do here, although that process of cleaning the heads will cost you less because you're using the ink bottles to resupply the printer versus more expensive cartridges. But for people that are not printing all that frequently, I still recommend laser printers as the way to go because they can sit for months and then just come right back up like nothing happened, whereas an inkjet printer takes a lot more coaxing to get working again. But all that said, again, if you are a high volume printer, you don't need a lot of bells and whistles, you don't mind having a noisy printer on your desk, this is definitely going to save you a bunch of money because all you gotta do is just plug in another bottle to refill everything for a lot less than what you're paying now on a cartridge-based printer. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.